Hey folks, welcome to It Had To Be Said, home of the most dangerous ideas on YouTube. I made a video uh, way back, you know, a year and a half ago now, <laughs> time flies, about the so-called political compass and what all the terms on it mean. So if you're a beginner to the idea of the left, you might like to watch it. This video needs a working definition of the left, so here goes. For the most part, the left is anti-capitalist, so socialist. So, uh, all socialist ideas, including communism and anarchism, are on the left, too. They don't have that much in common, but I think it's fair to say they share the vision of a classless, moneyless, borderless world where the environment is taken care of and people's lives and freedom are respected. I can understand that being a shocking idea to many who've never heard it. Uh, some might even think it's puerile. But I think it's the logical end of valuing things like freedom and justice and peace. Most of the differences among leftists arise from how to get there. Liberals are not on the left. They don't share this vision. I know to many people liberals define the left, but those are mostly people who don't understand leftist ideas and aren't interested in learning. So they call people liberal commies and postmodern Marxists, both of which are oxymorons. They write articles and make videos attacking the left, when usually they're talking about liberals and Democrats who have nothing to do with the left. The liberal understanding of the world and the systems that control it, their values, their priorities, are different from those of the left. Liberals are reformists, not radicals. For example, liberals often preach this vague tolerance, presumably meaning don't be racist. Liberals don't talk about things that really matter. They don't talk about systems. So leftists don't talk about tolerance. They want to radically restructure the institutions of society so systemic problems like racism are actually dealt with. They aren't as easily pacified by elections and new legislation as liberals. If right-wingers even tried to understand leftists, they would know that. But instead, leftists punch out Nazis and the right goes, so much for the tolerant left. The left never claimed to be tolerant of racism or sexism or other prejudices against oppressed groups. Right-wingers know nothing about ideology, and yet they think they know enough to attack it. In fact, I rarely hear any argument from the right against socialism or the existence of systematic oppression that isn't a straw man. And they have no interest in addressing the real criticisms that people like me have for them. There are lots of videos on YouTube you can watch debunking all right-wing beliefs, and it's probably important to make those videos because it, they're needed to counteract the constant flow of lies that pours out of the right-wing cesspool. All I know is, when they talk about leftists, they're not talking about me. This conflating of liberals and the left create a huge group that right-wingers can talk about in order to scare people away from the left and toward the right, which is supposedly the alternative. You know, thinking for yourself is always an option, but whatever. So anything done by anyone they can get away with labeling a leftist or an SJW, they assume those people represent the left. Whereas really no one could represent the left. Then they tell their why I left the left stories. You can watch them for yourself if, if you can stomach it. They say it was these leftists, this vague group they were once associated with, that forced them to leave the left and join the right. And it's always the same story, too. I was once a leftist like you, but the people on the left are always fighting, and they were rude to me, and they 
canceled me, so I went to the right, and the right embraced me. Mm. Yes, they're very friendly. Their claim seems to be caring too much about issues of justice made the left unpalatable, but all the racism and mass shootings weren't enough to drive them away from the right. Right-wingers will lie about anything, so from their videos we have no idea whether any given person making their claims is serious. Ask them to describe the leftist literature they've read. There's a good chance they were never on the left in the first place. You don't join the left for the camaraderie. You don't have to like other leftists. You do it because of your values and your principles, because you value things like fairness and equality, and you're sick of war and poverty and racism. When you're ready to throw your values away for money, you join the right. Rich people pay right-wingers large sums of money to make shit up and put it on YouTube. I want to know what they're leaving out of their left-the-left -left stories. I got cancelled. Oh yeah? What did you do? Did you make a joke at the expense of fat people or trans people? Did you try to talk over black people? Did you refuse to listen to people trying to explain what was wrong with your behavior and then stomp out of the room? Because I've done that one. But now, I listen. But when I listen to right-wingers on YouTube, all I learn is their entire ideology is based on lies. I, I usually don't like to say such sweeping generalizations, if for no other reason than people think you're wrong and lying and you must just be being dismissive, right? But I'm not. I've listened to them. Everything they say is based on bullshit. Even if some of their individual facts might be correct, the overall structure of what they're saying is nonsense. The things that they're afraid of are things like economic and racial equality. So they just make shit up about those things just to scare you. What? You want racial equality? That's cultural Marxism. Just so you all know, there's no such thing as cultural Marxism outside the imaginations of the right. It's just a neo-Nazi dog whistle. That's all. But it sounds scary. And if you want economic inequality, uh, economic equality, they'll say things like Stalin and the USSR and Venezuela. <sighs> Presumably because they rely on feelings, and they know associating equality with places like the USSR is one of the few beliefs still propping up capitalism. They even tell you you're just jealous of successful people and you hate your parents. <laughs> you know, because studying how systems work and wanting to do something about them means you hate your dad. If they paid any attention to the way the world is, they would realize the things they were told to fear about communism were actually describing capitalism. From the way a few people, bosses, control your life, to the propaganda, the surveillance, the poverty, the concentration camps, the endless wars, the destruction of freedom, and daily state violence against citizens. But they don't care about any of those things as long as the institutions are run by white people who call themselves capitalists. Now the right is talking about cancel culture and pretending that getting called out for your shitty behavior is the basis of writing whole books about how evil this amorphous left is. Why examine your own behavior when we have this new term, cancel culture, you can use to tell yourself you're actually a victim? By the way, in, in what sense have any of these left-the-left -left people actually been canceled? They have millions of subscribers, 
They appear on TV and in public auditoriums, and they make six figures saying the left won't allow them to say the things they're saying. They're not victims of anything other than the capitalist imperative to make money. Before these grifters invented this term and smeared it all over the media, getting cancelled actually meant something. When did the media say anything when for the past 60 years, professors in the U.S. have been silenced, harassed, slandered, and fired because they had the audacity to say Palestinians should have rights too? They, they never treated that like a moral crisis. Why didn't the right speak out in favor of the professor's f freedom of speech at the time? No, oh, right. <laughs> because they were the ones trying to get them fired. They love to talk about freedom of speech, though. It's a highly useful buzzword. There's plenty of valid criticism of the left from the left already. Leftists criticize each other for dismissing people who haven't read all the same books as they have, or for not liking the same books as they do. Leftist guys get criticized all the time for not changing their shitty behavior toward women. Many on the left focus on some forms of oppression but ignore others, say reducing everything to class and downplaying racism, or only considering social issues and sidelining the economics of things. There's too much faith in unions, in my opinion, and, and in a narrowly defined working class. There's too much talk about seizing and using state power, and not enough about the goal of a free society. Moreover, too many leftists fixate on the past instead of envisioning and creating the future. But it seems to me the only valid criticism that any of these left-the-left -the -left people make is leftists spend too much time arguing, and they're not friendly and patient with new people. That's probably pretty fair. But that depends where you are. If you join leftist debate groups, or just any group with a variety of leftist tendencies in it, there are likely to be some bitter debates. Debates that don't even matter, but go unresolved and devolve into name-calling. But not all online groups are like that. Some groups are quite open and inclusive, even cracking down on arguing for the sake of unity. Leftists can work together. They just need to think priorities instead of attacking each other unnecessarily. Or they could just leave each other alone. I'm done bringing up China and Stalin and Lenin in mixed leftist groups, and I've left the debate groups altogether. Why waste my time there? Nothing's getting done except people are reaching conclusions like, I can't work with other leftists. You probably can work with them on various activities that would further your goals, but you don't need to work with them. It depends what they're doing and if you believe in it and if it has a chance of success, however remote. Like, I would never throw my lot in with a campaign to run for office, even though I've been asked before. Because trying to work through the state is a huge, fruitless diversion of resources away from the people you're supposedly fighting for. I would much rather look for people doing decolonization work, or anti-racist and anti-fascist organizing, especially if they're also working on police and prison abolition. It doesn't matter if they call themselves leftists or not. It doesn't matter if they haven't read theory. I'd look for organizations led by black and indigenous people, not white people with flags. That's all I mean by keep moving left. But I don't know what you think you should do. You'll decide that for yourself. So I left this left they keep referring to, but that doesn't mean I've gone anywhere near the right. The more I read and listen to people, the more radical my thinking becomes. I've left the left because I want more than they want. I don't want to preserve any of these social institutions like government, corporation, or school. They're all part of the problem. I don't want to raise taxes on the rich. I don't care about elections in a capitalist system. As, as you can tell, possibly, by the fact that there's going to be an election in three days, and I haven't even mentioned it. <laughs>
I don't think legislation and a new Supreme Court judge will solve anything. I don't have a problem with looting and rioting. And aside from any specific criticisms, and of course, feel free to leave those in the comments, it doesn't matter to me if people on the right or the left think I'm wrong. I don't say these things to be popular. I didn't reach these conclusions based on what would get me a million subscribers. In my experience, the most popular people are usually the most wrong. Most of us are too busy hacking at the branches of the problem instead of striking the root. The people striking the root are the ones I'm looking for. We have a lot of work to do.